All right, welcome back to another Ultimate Smart Garage update. It's been a few weeks since I've provided an update, so uh, I figured I'd show you guys what I got going on. Uh, I'm actually walking around the garage. Uh, if you guys can remember the last few uh, updates, even though the garage was getting cleaned up, there was a bunch of stuff on the floor from projects around the house, a bunch of lumber and random things. And, and now it's actually clear. You can actually see the beautiful race deck flooring. It's actually getting cleaned up by the robo vac over there at the moment. And uh, yeah, things are getting off the floor. Still a lot of uh, organization still to be done, but it's coming along, it's coming along. So I'm gonna give you guys a little update and a walkthrough of what I've been up to and kind of still what has to be done. Uh, and then uh, got a little question for you guys at the end. So big part of my garage has been kind of this detail set up here. Uh, I did a quick update on this a few weeks ago. Uh, this is actually the Obsessed Garage. I think it's their ultimate package. Uh, I actually had it over there and relocated that, that for something else, which I'll share with you in a little bit. And took this opportunity to utilize their Prevost piping setup uh, to get the plumbing that I originally put in a couple years ago over there to over here. Well, obviously it wouldn't, wouldn't be feasible to run all that through the wall. So I utilized the Prevost piping or exposed industrial piping to get the water supply over here. Uh, I already had my AR Blue 630 TSS pressure washer, uh, which I love that thing. Uh, and I've had my Cox hose reel um, and uh, Cobra Jet hose for a while now. Uh, and then I, I swapped out my homemade DI solution over there uh, for a CR Spotless Twin Tank uh, solution. Uh, and I've got this cold mix metering bucket filler here, which is actually really cool uh, to fill the, the buckets with um, automatically. I got that just sitting there with a magnet and my Obsessed Garage wand and gun. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All my detailing stuff is in. So these are a new addition. Uh, I've got the a uh, couple of more new age cabinets, not the highest end cabinets on the market, but they do the job. I've got plenty of their cabinets elsewhere in this bold red color, they call it. Uh, and I got a couple more uh, to get some stuff that was out on the wall, get, get it put away uh, and nice and neat and out of sight when not being used. As I previously mentioned, I had the pressure washer set up over here, uh, but I really wanted to do this uh, top shelf bike lift solution uh, that gave me an opportunity to store my bike rack as well as put a couple of bikes up top uh, and usually have a couple bikes below, but one is out getting tuned up right now. Uh, and uh, so I had all this plumbing was, was in here. I moved that over, got a new sink, just a basic red garage sink from Home Depot, kind of sort of matches. Uh, I actually had a, a extra new age lower cabinet that I converted to a upper cabinet. Uh, and as you can see there, I still got some touch up paint to do, uh, but I've got a Acara uh, P1 motion sensor here and another one over here. So basically once there's motion in the garage, uh, the hex lights will turn on, the ceiling fan will turn on, and the air conditioning, uh, I have that set to 86 degrees when there's no motion, uh, and then drops it down to 78 degrees when there's motion from either one of these sensors. So depending on where you are in the garage, one might be blocked. So I've got two sensors in place and that pretty much solved that issue. Um, still sorting out the cabinets here, but uh, some of them have some basic Amazon motion sensor in cabinet lights. Uh, so that works pretty good. This thing is really, really cool. So we've got the remote over here. I still got to do some cable management, but as you lower that down, it brings the bikes and the bike rack. There's a little stop there so you can't crush your bike below. So it brings these bikes down to uh, down the level so you can get them off or take the bike rack off. And when you're done, pop the bikes back up on the rack, hit the button and they go back up until they hit the, uh, the stop right there. And then that takes them a few inches away from the ceiling. And now they're out of the way. I can actually I can actually stand underneath the bikes. Uh, so that gives me plenty of room. 
uh, to put two more bikes underneath. I got some more junk, some more projects and some more wood and trim that I've got to finish up. So that'll be cleared out here in a little bit. And then as I've mentioned before, my favorite thing, uh, the Levrack storage solution. Uh, so that is almost done. That's still getting sorted. It's got a motion light in there that comes on. As you can see, I've got my hardware and different supplies and some bulk items in here. Um, this thing is actually really, really magnified the amount of storage that, that I have in here. Um, so bike stuff, outdoor stuff, all types of things in here. Uh, and when you're done, you can store it away nice and neat. So that allows uh, more for more storage. And I've got some junk up top that I still got to tidy up. So coming along there. Um, and then you can see there's a bunch of crap on the counter that I, that I, I, uh, I need to organize and put away. So uh, that is in the works. Also, I've got the uh, LG 60 inch TV over there and the Sonos Beam that I've had up for a while, a while now. Uh, additionally, back on this wall, uh, I've got a couple of Sonos uh, SL1s that have been sitting around. Uh, so now I've got those configured in a 5.1 surround sound. So since the last update, Sonos Sub Gen 3 has gone in. So now we've got don't ask me why, I just did it. But now we've got a uh, full 5.1 surround sound in here. Actually sounds really good, really just for music. Over on this wall, I've done a previous video on my Chamberlain MyQ jack shaft on wall garage door opener. That thing is incredible, super quiet, uh, and, um, and, and it's got a battery backup. And then here I've got the Meros HomeKit garage adapter as well as the little adapter that goes with that. Um, mounted to some pegboard that's on the wall magnetically to uh, expose Chamberlain garage door opener to home kit because uh, they block you from doing that nat natively. Uh, actually, while we're over here, I've got the vacuum made garage vac pro um, attached to a Cox hose reel uh, and a Milwaukee Bluetooth switch. So. Uh, I use that for two purposes, obviously vacuuming out the cars, but um, as I do work in this garage, uh, there's power tools that make dust, right? So I'll take the solids outside uh, and I'll use that as a dust collection system. Uh, I've got the Omni walls. These were actually here before, uh, but I kind of reworked them a little bit to get a lot of my power tools up on the wall, nice and neat. And then something I've wanted to do for a long time and actually have all my batteries mounted or my battery chargers mounted to the wall. So you can do one handed operation there. You don't have to hold the chargers down. So I do have the Dewalkey life going on. So Milwaukee and DeWalt. Uh, so both my chargers or primary chargers are there. A lot of the power tools that were out are slowly getting put into the cabinets kind of by category. I got a little bit of Milwaukee pack out still in place there uh, and actually some empty cabinets still that I have to go through and organize this stuff. So yeah, it is a mess right now. Um, but compared to where, what it was, it's actually pretty incredible. I'm actually really excited. Uh, by the way, I also have overhead storage that you might've seen in some previous videos. I used to have the large four by eights that came over here, but I actually had one collapse a few months ago. Um, and uh, so I've gone with smaller ones that can't really be overloaded with too much of my wife's Christmas crap and too much weight. Um, so I've got those pretty much around the entire perimeter uh, of the garage. So I have storage up above for extra stuff uh, without kind of making it feel cramped and dark in here like the, uh, the larger storage uh, racks did. So yeah, it's almost done. It's 95% of the way there. I just got to organize some junk. Oh, one more thing. Had some folks ask me about the Lockley lock. Uh, this actually is a OG Lockley lock. Uh, I've had this for a very, very, very long time. Um, and I'm actually surprised the batteries aren't dead. We very rarely lock it, uh, but it actually is pretty incredible. You can actually you can lock it, unlock it, use the passcode or use your fingerprint. Um, and it has a hidden physical key. Uh, this is actually a, a 
five-year-old lock, uh, and uh, I'm very, very impressed with the lock of the lock. And then the Pura, I covered this in the previous video as well, the Pura Dual Smart Air Freshener uh, in a Casa Smart Plug. So again, that's tied to motion. If there's no motion in here, that turns off. Uh, so you're not wasting air freshener, but once there's motion, it sets off a 15 minute timer. Um, and if there's no motion for 15 minutes, then air freshener turns off, lights turn off, fans turn off, and the AC goes into kind of standby mode at 86 degrees. Uh, and then last thing, I keep saying that. It's gonna be a longer video than normal. Uh, I just added a uh, parking laser because now that the garage is big enough, I can fit a car in here. So here's the question for you guys. Now that the garage floor is clear and it's looking pretty good in here and I can fit a car, what should I put in there? Go ahead and uh, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what your vote is. What car would be cool enough for the ultimate smart two-car garage? Um, let me know your thoughts and maybe we'll make it happen. Thanks for watching.